Uh, I'm in fact Oliver, a bioinformatician at Biomage. And today I wanted to be talking about how we are trying to make single cell data analysis simple. And this is by creating this amazing tool that we're working on, which is Selenix. So uh, before I begin, I want to start with a brief introduction about myself. Uh, I'm a biologist with a master's in bioinformatics uh, from the University of Buenos Aires. Uh, and I've also studied about three to four years of computer science. In my background, I worked uh, both as a software developer and a data analyst. And in a more field related to biology, I've been involved in three different biology labs doing uh, wet lab research and computational biology. So for the past years, I, I've been mostly focusing on bioinformatics and focusing on bioinformatics is how I ended up uh, finding Biomage. So when I, when I first saw the, the Biomage platform, that's, I, I got really, really amazed by the product that they were building. And, and at the moment, my first reaction was to just go directly to the GitHub repo, download all of the source code and start looking at the code and looking at the project they were building. And to be honest, I was absolutely impressed by the potential that I saw in this tool to really make an impact throughout uh, lab, uh, research labs around the world. So this is what really motivated me to be here. This is the reason I'm here uh, talking to you because this is my passion. This is where I, I want to be in. So um, I mentioned that we are building a single cell RNA-seq analysis tool, but let's give a, a step back and start with what is single cell RNA-seq, just in case anyone around there hasn't heard of it or doesn't know exactly what it is. So traditionally, when we wanted to study expression in a tissue or in a group of cells, would we'll just prepare the sample and calculate, uh, evaluate average expression across all the cells of this sample. Uh, this is bulk RNA-seq, and it has been an invaluable technique in the past years in uh, the field of biology. That being said, in the past uh, 10, 12 years, I think, uh, there it started, a new technique has started being developed, which is single cell RNA-seq. This technique, consists in separating the cells of this tissue or sample that we want to analyze and taking a look at the distinct expression profile that each cell has by calculating the expression of, of genes in each and every cell. This link is really, really useful in particular for studying uh, heterogeneity in a cell population and for uh, finding rare cell populations uh, in, in, within a, a cell group. So, uh, let's go with an example of why you would use single cell RNA-seq and, and the uses it really has and the power it really has. So let's talk about this paper. This has been a, a really famous paper uh, about the study of cystic fibrosis. Uh, for, those of, uh, for those here who do not know what cystic fibrosis is, uh, it's a disease caused by the accumulation of mucus in the lungs or, or other organs. And uh, in particular, the researchers that were studying the cystic fibrosis noticed that decided to, to do a single cell RNA-seq experiment to try to further analyze this, this disease. And what they found uh, is that a rare cell population in the tissue that they were studying was expressing uh, this CFTR gene. This is the gene that is mutated in cystic fibrosis. Well, this was a surprise because CFTR was, uh, was supposed to be expressed in an average way by, by the ciliated cells of the lung. So, in this case, single cell RNA-seq data allowed them to discover a new population of cells that was expressing this gene that was thought to be expressed averagely by other cells and, and really allowed them to, to discover like a possible new target for this cystic fibrosis disease. Of course, uh, further analysis showed that deletion of these cells in mouse models leads to cystic fibrosis disease. So that's been a really, really interesting discovery and a really, really important step um, for, the, for the treatment of cystic fibrosis. Uh, this is just one example of the power and the capacity that single cell RNA-seq analysis has. And it, it's really uh, stood up to me. I, I really like this example because it, it, it shows the capacity of single cell for finding rare cell populations. So I talked about why we want to do a single cell RNA-seq study. No, let me introduce some of the problems that we have found with single cell RNA-seq. So I want to tell you the story of two scientists. Uh, one of them is Vicky. Well, just to note that these are two very real people. Uh, I've worked a lot with Vicky and Vicky uh, used to be a PI in the University of Glasgow. She is a biologist and an expert in immunology. And on the other hand, we have Priti, 
who works at Boston Children's Hospital in Harvard University and is a research bioinformatician. So let's take a look at Vicky's story. Vicky was studying a particular type of immune cells, which are gamma delta T cells. And she decided to do a single cell RNA-seq experiment to further analyze these cells. So she did all the homework, prepared samples, sent them from high, high throughput sequencing, and got the results back. But when she got these results back, she realized that the analysis of this data would take her more time than the rest of her experiment. So she was left with two options, either work with a bioinformatician to try and analyze the data or teach herself R and try to teach herself bioinformatics and analyze this data on her own. To work with a bioinformatician, she would need to fulfill a couple of needs, which was mainly explain the biology to them and work in a close relationship with them, which lead to a lot of to and froing for several iterations, a lot of interchange, and a lot of coming and going to making the actual figures that Vicky wanted to make. And because she's the one that really has the expertise on this data, she knows why she went for this experiment. She's the one that really wanted to have the control of this data and working this way didn't let her have full control over her data. The other option to teach herself R, okay, that's great, but it takes a really a long time to really understand R and to understand the bioinformatics underlying uh, all the analysis that she has to do. So it's a lot of time just to perform a single analysis that she wanted to make. Suffice to say that she was really annoyed and frustrated by this situation. In the end, she ended up doing a combination of the two, but I really don't want to get ahead of myself. So let's go to Preeti's story. Being a bioinformatician, Preeti works with a team of biologists and has to analyze a lot of experiments. And she's currently working with eight data sets at the same time, eight single cell data sets at the same time. That's really, really cool and really, really interesting. But at the same time, it involves a lot of repetitive analysis and repetitive code and repeated um, repeated analysis for the same uh, for the different data sets. So it's it's really not great in that sense. And she has another problematic, which is that she needs to share this analysis and explain her decisions with the biologists she's working with. Uh, biologists that she works with can't really explore the data on her own. They are very dependent on, on, on her to lead the analysis forward. And she also needs to understand the biology behind these experiments, which is the other side of the problem that Vicky was having. She needs to understand this so that she can provide good, good bioinformatics advice and that she can provide a good bioinformatics analysis. So this ends up being uh, pretty problematic for Preeti as well. And as we can see from analyzing these two stories, we can notice that they have a lot of common points. The challenges that Biki and Pretty are facing are really similar, and they have a lot to do with each other. So with these challenges in mind, and not thinking only about Biki and Pretty, but think, thinking about biologists and bioinformaticians around the world, is that came up the idea for Selenix. This is the solution that we devised for this problem. So Selenix is a cloud-based, open-source, single-cell graphical explorer. It's a tool that analyzes that, that allows researchers around the world to analyze their single-cell RNA-seq data. Of course, it's a free-to-use open-source tool, um, and it, we are always striving to, pro to provide the latest method available for uh, Selenix to work with. So, let me tell you just a bit about uh, what Selenix does, a bit about uh, what the modules it has, and how these modules help to solve Beaky Pretties and everyone's uh, single cell RNA seq analysis problems. So, uh, we got a data upload module uh, that basically any user can upload their, their matrix files and have them being processed in the cloud. Uh, we have a data processing module which basically takes care of all the QC processing in a fully automatized manner. Uh, this is the module where if you have bioinformatics expertise, you will want to spend a little more time on, uh, taking a look at the threshold, taking a look at what the filters are filtering out and tweaking all the settings to your precise needs. But at the same time, if you are a biologist or you don't have experience in single cell, we have all the automatic thresholds and we have a really guided process for the QC of your data. So it's really easy to use. It's really straightforward, simple. You upload your data and all of the data upload conversion to our object and data processing of your data is done automatically for you. And that allows you to go to data exploration module really quick. And the data exploration module is where the actual magic happens. It's where you get to 
actually explore your data, take a look at what's going on, look at the gene expressions, look at the embeddings, look at the clusters that you have in your data and evaluate them, the marker genes for your data set, try to annotate. All of these tools are integrated in this single solution. Everything that you will need for downstream single cell RNA-seq analysis is included in this data exploration module. Of course, once you've reached some conclusions, once you've reached some insight, you can go to the plots and table sections to create the plots. And of course, this will be very helpful for Biki and Pretty because they won't have to be worrying about uh, which label size the biologist wants. Uh, you just can go here, modify everything you want about the plots, and it's really, really simple and fast to use. So this, this is the, the great scope of Selenix. This is what it does, and this is how it will help uh, both Biki and Pretty with their tasks. This is, this is how it will help biologists and bioinformaticians with their tasks and to share experiments between each other. So I mentioned that this was cloud-based, and I really want to stress this point. I think it's very important. And in particular, that's because if we take a look at this chart, we can see uh, the number of single cells for each study and the study publication date. And I'm sure you can all see a really clear tendency here. The data size for single cell RNA-seq analysis is growing at an alarming rate. And to be honest, computing capacity is not growing at the same rate. In particular, if you have um, a home computer and you want to run your analysis on a home computer, it's very likely that you won't be able to analyze some experiments in the near future or right now even. Um, this data is growing fast, it's growing in size, it's growing in processing times, and it's growing in sample number. So it's it's really important for us to be able to keep up with this increase in size. This is a real, a very real problem in single cell RNA-seq data. And that's why we thought that this solution needed to be a cloud-based solution so yet you, that you don't have to worry, either you or any biologist or bioinformaticians don't have to worry about uh, the size of your data. You can just upload your data and get the cloud to process it, and you don't have to have a super powerful computer to run this experiment. That being said, it's there's no queue times whatsoever. You just upload your data and your analysis starts immediately, and that, I think, is a very particular difference that, that uh, stands Selenix apart. So, uh, another feature that I wanted to mention that I think will be particularly interesting for other bioinformaticians out there is the fact that Selenix is R-based and like at the back end of all of this, we have an R object and this R object is easily downloadable. So if at any time of the analysis you want to get out of the UI and continue your analysis on R, then you can do that. Just go download the object, analyze whatever you want in R, and then go back to the UI and, and, further, uh, and further your analysis, export new plots, or just continue to explore your data. I think this functionality is particularly useful for bioinformaticians that always want to run the things uh, on their own way. I, I really appreciate this. And, and so we are, we are very happy with this easiness, like the, the ease with which you can switch from the UI to your own console and back. So let's wrap up the story of Biki and Pretty. Let's see how their story is ended. Um, so over six weeks is the time that Biki spent trying to learn R and working with a bioinformatician to try to obtain insight of her data. Six months is the time she took to get that data ready for publication. When introduced to Selenix, Biki could reproduce these results in under an hour. So I think that's really impressive. And it was so impressive for her that she actually decided to quit her academia job and join Biomage to help us build Selenix and make sure that it's really designed for researchers. On the other hand, we have Pretty, who has been a, a really good user of Selenix. And she actually likes Selenix so much that she wants all of the research biologists in her labs to use it. Uh, she can now easily share her analysis with her fellow biologists. And because they can uh, pursue their analysis on their own, they can explore their own data and create their own plots, she's free to focus on the important challenges of her bioinformatics analysis and not on the standard processing pipeline. She can leave their, their, her associate biologists to explore the data and she can go and provide important feedback on uh, thresholds for filters or provide further downstream analysis by downloading these R objects and furthering the, the analysis that she can do of it. So this has been, I think, very great for Pretty. Uh, I would love to have a quote from her, but I don't have it. I'll have to ask her. And 
after closing this story about these two biologists, two scientists, uh, I wanted to show you a bit of how we are doing right now. So, and, and what the status of, of Selenix is right now. So this, the open beta of Selenix was released just nine weeks ago. And, and we have now almost 200 uh, user accounts. We have more than 30 engaged users. I think these plots are a bit out of date. We have almost 40 engaged users right now. Uh, engaged users are a metric that we use that's based on um, the number of the amount of hours that users spend on the platform and whether they upload their own data or not. Um, and again, the time that users are spending on the platform is growing really fast for a product that was released nine weeks ago. So we are really, really excited about these results. We are very happy with what's going on and super, uh, super excited about the, the feedback that we have received from the users uh, that have been giving this platform a try. So uh, let's take a look at the next big challenges that we're thinking for Selenix. Uh, I got a couple that I think you will be very interested in. Um, so for any bioinformaticians out there, one of the things that we're thinking about implementing and that we are currently designing is the concept of cloud-based customized pipelines. We have a situation with single cell RNA-seq data. That is that because the data is growing at an alarming rate and developments on this type of analysis are growing, best practices are changing really, really fast. New methods for this come out virtually every single day and we have to keep up with this. So any single cell analysis platform really needs to be able to adapt to this ever-changing landscape and to do this, one of the solutions that we thought beyond <laughs> keeping up to date with the current methods and modifying the code base is to allow users run cloud-based customized pipelines. So if you have a script that you want to run that modifies the data for, a, uh, for an additional quality control of your data or whatever, uh, we want to implement this product where you can run your custom scripts in our platform. So you can use the power, the computing power of the, of the cloud, you can use the UI of uh, Selenix, and you can run your own scripts there to process the data however you want. I think this can be particularly enticing to bioinformaticians because we all know the, the need for freedom to run the scripts however we want. We all like things our own way, and it's very important to have this, this ability to explore our data in the way that we want. So the other big thing that it's coming, and that's actually, this is a, a current picture of Selenix right now with, uh, with a spatial attractive atomic data set is exactly this, spatial attractive atomics. Uh, just briefly, I know most of you probably know about this, but it's based on in situ um, sequencing of cells in that tissue. So it gives us not only the understanding of what the cells are doing, what is happening, but where it is happening, like the context for each and every cell. And this is really, really important to understand biology. It's very important to have the knowledge of the context of a particular cell to understand what they are doing. Um, this method has a groundbreaking potential in the field of precision medicine. And I really want to stress this out because this is where biomage's passion is. Our passion is in human health. Our passion is in precision medicine. Our passion is in bringing solutions to biomedical researchers around the world, bringing solutions that will help them to move human health uh, forward. So this, this is what I really wanted to stress out about this. This is almost ready. We already have some functioning experiments in our platform and we're gonna continue to implement this in the future. So uh, with that being said, I really wanna help, thank you for, for listening to this talk. I hope you find it entertaining. I hope you find it useful. Um, and if you have any kind of questions, please let me know when I'm, I will be here for a short Q and A session. I think we have time, Adam. Um, and so anything that you want to ask, just go ahead and I'll be here to answer. Yeah, certainly. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you so much, Oliver. Um, yeah, it was, it was pleasure to listen about, about the, about the, about the solution. Um, I'm just, I'm just wondering, um, obviously the kind of two approaches to build a software like this would be um, one is to target biologists as end users and build build a solution that's user friendly that does that doesn't require require coding skills and that um, that essentially allows that essentially allows biologists to easily use the 
uh, the bioinformatics that, that's running behind, behind the scenes, but a different approach, um, which we've seen, uh, which we've seen applied by companies like LifeBit AI or DNA Nexus um, or Seven Bridges, is actually building a solution that will be useful for bioinformaticians uh, working working in pharmaceutical companies and biotechs, working at universities, um, and essentially and essentially enabling them to easily work with very large data sets such as UK Biobank or um, you know, any, of the, any of the sort of cell atlases, uh, single cell atlases that, that have been coming together. So, so I'm kind of wondering, giving those two sort of opportunities or giving those two approaches, um, you know, which one did Biomage choose and, um, and why? Okay, Adam, yeah. So given those two approaches, I've got to say that Biomage actually went for um, for trying to impact more biologists than bioinformaticians. The product is more uh, designed and prepared for biologists that don't have uh, bioinformatics experience, that don't know R, that don't know coding, and need to run this um, this single cell data analysis pipelines on their own. So that's that's a reality. The reality of it is that it's designed for biological researchers. And the reason is that we saw this need, we saw this requirement of people that really don't have the time to teach themselves bioinformatics, don't have the time to teach themselves R or to go back and forth uh, with bioinformaticians to analyze the data. And they do have the need to have their control over the data. That's the key word here. That's the important part uh, for them is to have control over the data because they are the ones that have the expertise they are the ones that know what they are doing. They are the ones that know what they are studying and they need to be able to explore the data and get out conclusions from their own data. So that's what we are striving for. And that being said, I wanna point out that we are really working on having a strong architecture that will allow us to, that allows us to support this large data set so that also bioinformaticians will find uh, an, interesting, an interesting angle to our platform and a useful uh, angle to our platform. I see. I see. So it's primarily it's primarily biologists who would be the who would be the end user, but um, but bioinformaticians are are also important, and you're also keeping them in mind while developing this software. Okay, that's um, that's wonderful. That's uh, that's great to know. Um, Oliver, thank you so much for joining us.